welcome to part two of the new Bat uh, Fan Home Batmobile build series. And this is Simulies 3, 4, and 5. There's a total of 120 to build this sucker. So we'll be here for a while. Uh, we worked on this for a good while. <laughs> uh, it is. <clears throat> that is a lot. Yes, that is a whole lot. And there's going to be electronics involved too. And just looking at some of the detail stuff. And it has clutch cables for the transmission. We got to trim that cable. So I had to run down and get my calibers. So, part of the instructions. Nice. It is very, very detailed. And the bell housing is die cast. There's lots of die cast on this thing. This thing's going to weigh a ton when it's done. We get three magazines with the with the build. And okay. we have like a little uh, overview of like episodes of the original series. This is the Fine Feathered Finks. We got a little summaries of the that episode. We get some history of the Batmobile uh, Batman in the comics, the text of comics number twenty seven, a little Little summary of the comics there. Little history of Batman. These are really cool little magazines. They look like comic book size. I haven't checked them yet. Uh, I think it's the next one. They send you a binder to put these in. Oh, very cool. And you get one with each build? Yep. Each build to a piece, you get one of these magazines, which at the end is your breakdown of your parts list, uh, numbering everything into the parts. And an instruction manual to how to assemble everything. Very cool. So we got we're building the it's going to like the top cow roll bar piece on the Batmobile, mm -hmm. and the antenna piece, the fin on top. Also, it's like a a North Star aerial or satellite aerial now. <laughs> All right, we're going to be doing the lenses. Okay, we got three different types, types of screws on this one. I think I remember reading that the the car that the Batmobile this Batmobile was based off of had an exterior microphone so that they could hear things outside of the, the car <laughs> via the microphone. The so, was it a 1955 concept Lincoln Futura? Mm -hmm. And we are going to go ahead and open up Simile 3. Uh, this is going to be the easiest one tonight. This is the Simile 2. Hey, I'm sorry. Simile 4. It's just the front windshield, and there's two pieces that go on each side. So that one's going to be the easy one tonight. This one's going to be the fun. We got some electronic wire. We got some wiring in too here. The lights. And yeah, so this design for the Batmobile was inspired by an encounter the designer had with the shark with the uh, Futura. Mm -hmm. And uh, originally the concept car was painted white, kind of a uh, iridescent white. And the, the paint that they used was made up of crushed fish scales. I would uh, kind of want to see what that looks like. Yeah. And then in the hands of George Paris, which turned it into the, the iconic car we know today. In like, what, three weeks, I think is what he had to make it? Yeah, I think so. It's like crazy turnaround time. Yeah. Uh, the, the first person who was given the job said that they couldn't do it in that time, so that's when it passed the Securely. We got the inside of the upper bar, the outer side. Oh, that's die cast. 
Yeah, we do the die cast on that. In inside piece is plastic. And then we got the inside lights. Ah, darn, I should have had my, my modeling snip, snips, but I'll make do. Yeah, a pair of plush headers for. All kinds of little pity pieces. Don't want any of those finding their way to the carpet monster. Nope. Yeah, it's worse up here. That, that's a tile floor on a sun porch. So and there's a gap. So if anything falls in that gap, it's gone for good. What's that gap sign? Between the wall and the yeah. I've dropped stuff in there and yeah. It's, it's it's still living in there. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get a chop gap or a shop back and see if you can vacuum it out. Uh, the way it, the way it is, it wouldn't work for that because it drops down too. So <laughs> fun. Oh no! Well, don't drop anything important then. All right, we got the little. Lights here. Give it like a little push, then bend, pops right off. So something that's interesting mm -hmm. is that the '66 uh, Batmobile had a emergency bat turn lever, and I didn't watch a whole bunch of the '66 Batman. But I did when I was little, but it's been. Yeah, essentially that sounds like uh, the 89 Batmobile that, uh, remember the grappling hook that they shot out the side of the car to turn? Yep. That's what that sounds like to me. It does sound like that a lot. So I thought that was, you know, when I, when I read about that, I, I was like, well, that's pretty cool that they kind of made a nod to that in the 89 Batman movie. You wonder what other, uh, you know, movie references that were made in the 89 Batman that referenced the TV show that we didn't catch because you know, the 66 was kind of before our time. Mm -hmm. With the uh, uh, those, I didn't know if it's true or not, but they're saying that the, the, of course nobody watches them anymore is the, the Oscars. Mm -hmm. Michael Keaton was actually dressed up as Adam West at the Oscars. Yeah. Well, they did a kind of a little Batman thing there. Mm-hmm. So, I, I didn't watch the Oscars. I hardly have time for TV. I don't think many people do watch the Oscars anymore. Um. These are, if I have my little snips, would be a little easier. I left them downstairs. Mm -hmm. I'm cutting at the base so I don't, the stem, I, I need to stem it. What's what pushes through the little chrome rim, rings for the lights. So I'm making a cut so I can snip them off without damaging them. That watch your locks them in, locks through. Yeah. Get the little. Chrome ring. Yeah, I've got some flush cutters that I use when I'm building models. That's what I got downstairs. Grab my calibers, but I can grab those. And get my big looks, fingers to, to work. I was going to say that looks tiny. It is. Especially for big old giant meat hooks that I have. And what are you putting together right now? What is that? These are the Robar uh, lights. Mm. And then we'll just... Yeah. I'll try to make it up. Come on, there you go. Two down. Two to go.
they snuck in through there and they go right there. On the side of the top of the bar. tedious part is just because we have big big fingers <laughs> yeah i wonder if there's something like a. you wouldn't want to hold them with like some needle nose pliers or anything like that you want like some soft grip pliers so that you didn't scratch up any of the details and i just that's what it's afraid of i dropped it and it popped right out <laughs> Is that part going to require some glue? Uh, it'll get sandwiched in between this, and that's what holds it in place. Okay. Get you back together there. There's a little bar that goes across, and then locks it in place. Mm -hmm. I got it here in a second. That's the next step. Putting the bar on to lock it in? Yep. That way they won't keep flying off. I can get my fingers to cooperate. That's your home. You want to live in your home. <laughs> okay. This one goes here. And I'll just knock that one out. <laughs> I wonder if something like a nylon jaw pliers would be helpful. Probably so. They probably have some that are made for like jewelry making or something that would do the trick. Sometimes though, those nylon jaw pliers are, they get kind of bulky. Probably less bulky than my big old fat fingers. I think this is going to be the most tedious part tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Mainly just because where my hands are. Mm -hmm. Screws are labeled, so you can't mix them up, which is good. That's, yeah, totally that, would. That is good. Well, sometimes, I mean, sometimes all the screws look exactly the same, so it's like, yep. or they're about the same size. I, I wonder if there's a reason for having the different screws, or if they just do it so that... These are different uh, diameters to their depths, too. Mm -hmm. So there's that. And glad the little screwdriver they provide is magnetic. Yeah. That helps a lot. I could have used a magnetic screwdriver the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I was changing out the light in my... Uh, 
I got a light pole in my backyard and I was changing out the light on it. And I dropped a screw in the grass. <laughs> oh. I was like, well, darn it. And then I dropped a second screw in the grass. And I was like, well, two screws is going to have to be good enough. <laughs> there we go. We got the little sidebars lights on. Now we're going to do, we got the, the chrome piece for the dome, right? That's easy enough. Just snaps in place. Two little pegs on there and there. And we got the red dome light. Now, is any of, does uh, it have a any of that wired or anything? Yes, uh, we uh, the wiring will be here. You like well, uh, the future kits will actually have a remote control too, where you can turn it on and off, turn oh. go through the sequence stuff. Very cool. And uh, yeah, this is zero. I uh, even refer to if you're questioning what you got. Take the the numbering is. 03H, which I'm 99.9% .9 sure it's that. 03H, Beacon Lens. Yeah. Yep, that's it. And that drops in there. That was kind of a satisfying sound that it made. It was. And here's where we're going to feed in the electronics. We've got... Next step, take the beacon in LED 03Q and push the bulb up through the center. Okay. And up through the center of the beacon the LED bracket, bending the bulb casting as shown. I can hear your dogs in the background. <laughs> This goes in this way. And Batman's dog's name was Ace. Yep. Didn't he have a couple different dogs uh, over the years? Probably so. <laughs> and a cow. <laughs> <laughs> Bat cow. Yeah. I forget what other pets he had. Anybody watching in the chat know what other pets Batman had other than a dog and a cow? screws in case you drop one, which is good. I'm liable to drop one or two. <laughs> like I did. <laughs> so I got me a little magnet just to help with keeping track of them. You just say, I don't have any screws loose. They fell out. Good. Let's 
make sure I ran the cable in the right direction. That is important. It's my audio coming in through fine because uh, I've got my mic because it's laying here on the table. Yeah. I asked you that and you robot it, robot it out. I robot it out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. All right. Let's see. This will go. Let's see. Through this way. All right. Go. <clears throat> There's Ace the Bat Hound. I don't think all these are Batman's pets because they got crypto, crypto listed here. And that's Superman's dog. Alfred the cat. I don't remember that. And Isis is Catwoman's. Yeah. Streaks? Who is Streaks? That that's like also Superman. Super, that's Superman uh, cat. Oh, that. Can't tell from the picture. Titus, that's another dog that uh, Batman. That's Damian Wayne's. Okay, let's see what this is now. Let's go through there. And this panel goes into here. Yeah, Beep Boop is a Superman monkey, not Batman. Bat cow. And then. Mm -hmm. Worry about the vac chrome on this lever pins a bit. It's a very delicate piece too. But that's on there. Goliath is apparently some kind of dragon bat. Supposed to be a left and right of these, but how can you tell? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Hold them up at the camera at the same time. Let me take a look. Do the bottoms have a different curve to them? Yeah, that's what it's looking at. How's the instruction to see how to handle that? Didn't have a marking on them to tell you which piece they are. They do not. Not that I can see. <laughs> I'm, gonna put the, I'm gonna put the prettier side out. I'm are they go. curved any differently at all? Or are they the exact mm -hmm. same part? No, there's definitely there's a left and right. Uh, I think there's a little uh, uglier edge on this side. Which it's is a little deeper on this side, so I would assume that's the inside. And those take different screws. They take the ooh, teeny tiny things. Uh, yeah, my big fingers can't open the book bags too well. <laughs> That's why I just cut them.
Can you hear my kids in the background? <clears throat> Are you able to hear my kids in the background? I think you're <laughs> muted. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. For some reason, my mic, it, it unrecognized my mic. Yeah, and now that rattling sound is back. Uh, you just can't win sometimes. <laughs> it changed to the other mic. Uh, How about now? Yep, I can hear you. That's good. That cleared it up. Oh, boy. These seem ridiculously small. Yeah. Let's see. Apparently the 66 Batmobile was not the first Batmobile. This is from handytv.com. Apparently there was a Batmobile in Batman's uh, in the 1940s. In his big screen debut in 1943. Uh, let's see, at that time, he motored around in a black 1939 Cadillac Series 75 convertible. It's more or less just like a car with a Batman logo on the front. Yeah. And 1949... This is uh, very frustrating with these little screws. Yeah. In 1949, Mercury served as the dynamic duo's mode of transportation in 1948's Batman and Robin. There we go. Finally. The screwdriver provided is too big. So luckily, I had a small, even smaller micro screwdriver here. And it's almost too big. 
it's probably just a tad bit too big, but it's, it's a flathead, but I actually got it to work. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm surprised they didn't include a screwdriver in the kit. They did on the first one. Starting to get annoying. <laughs> Turn my screwdriver into a magnet screwdriver by sticking a magnet on. Robinson of New Hampshire apparently also built a fantastic touring version of the Batman's Batmobile from a 1956 Oldsmobile Rocket 88. That's a cool. way of promoting the all-star dairy products. Uh, they have apparently had a line of Batman ice cream treats. If I can find a picture of this thing. Oh, what did I just do? <laughs> no. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> Come on. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, finally. I got this one going. One, one side down. One to go. Yay. It is on there. It is not easy. With a... These are teeny tiny little screws. It's hard to get started. <clears throat> the uh, Forrest Robinson Batmobile. Mm -hmm. It looks pretty cool. It's uh, kind of got a, I don't know, it's pretty streamlined and, and tapers towards the back and then has one central kind of fin on the back. On the front of the vehicle kind of peaks in the center and goes down and away towards either side. Sounds cool. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. All right, get that one started. <laughs> Struggled that first one. It's easier after you do it once. There we go. They apparently considered using a 1959 Caddy, which would have been cool because it's already almost got the, you know, kind of bat fins on the back of it. Mm-hmm. Those uh, the fins that those caddies have for the for the sixty six. Yeah, 
that would have been cool. Ooh, I see an issue that I need to address before I button this sucker up. I see a glint of copper on that cable. Mm -hmm. So it's been nicked. Oh. Both of them. Both of them got nicked? At the same spot, so it's going to be a short. Mm. Wonder if you, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, put some glue over it or something, if that would seal it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm actually to take the, the wire rack off right now. Glad I caught that now. Yeah. I'd be wondering, why is my dome light not working? That would have been upsetting later. I would say, after what was it were 115 more stages. <laughs> oh, jeez! I've been like, what? Do they send you anything so you can test all the electronics while you work, like to, to test the power and make sure that the cables and everything are? Uh, they did not. That would have been a, a handy thing something to plug it into to test and see if it lights up right. Uh, and the movie started with a kiss before it was used as the uh, Batmobile. The Futura? Mm hmm. Okay. With Glenn Ford and Debbie Reynolds. I think at that point it was painted red. Here we go. Yep, that should take care of it. Car was painted bright red. I cut a little tiny piece of electrical tape and wrapped it over one side, double wrapped it, then I wrapped the other one together. Oh, so yeah, that should, should take care of any problems there. It's like any model building thing, you gotta. Troubleshoot. <laughs> hmm. Barris apparently bought it from Ford for a dollar. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the thing originally cost two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to make. So, I wonder what two hundred and fifty thousand dollars from nineteen what sixty would be now adjusted well, for inflation. Technically, it's about the only person who could buy it because they're not legally allowed to sell concept cars to the public. It's like with uh, sadly with the Knight Rider. Most of the cars were crushed after it because mm. the movie production got them because they were part of a railroad car derailment. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of F bodies on there, and they kept, instead of being just automatically destroyed because they were deemed after the wreck, even though most of them were usable vehicles, but they were still deemed unsellable to the public for safety. So Paramount got all the cars, or you know, the NBC Universal, where it was NBC Universal, got the cars under a deal. After production, they crush them. So the majority of not, screen used Night Rider cars were crushed. Mm, that's sad. Only the first batch cars from season one were not part of that deal. 
and the very few that survived that first season are the ones that's left. Mm. So now it would have cost them adjusting for inflation. It would have been these little markers. Uh, amber, yeah, red markers here. <laughs> it would have been two million six hundred and fifty one thousand six hundred and thirty one dollars. That's a big chunk of change. Well, I guess the cumulative inflation since 1960 has been 960.65%. That's, uh, that's a lot. <laughs> that was almost really bad. Almost lost that. <laughs> oh, no. That fell short of how much it sold for when it was auctioned off in 2013. Apparently sold for 4.2 million. $4.2 million. Mm -hmm. Wow. You can buy a lot of sandwiches with that. Mm-hmm. And pay a professional chef to make them. Feed the cable through the hole on the bottom of this piece. Maybe push it up to the side. What's that sticker on the side of that say? Emergency bat turn lever. That's what that. Yeah, that's what we talked about earlier. Uh huh. That's what I was talking about. in seeing a clip from the show that shows them using the emergency bat turn lever. Oh, we get some comments. Um, I got two comments from me testing the chat. Oh, it says good evening and how's everyone doing? emergency bat turn lever deployed some parachutes and then yeah. also made the car rotate 360 degrees in one spot so that's what the, the emergency bat lever is actually what plugs into this post here so the light goes in here and this goes like this
just think, another 115 of these to watch me struggle through. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, definitely going to be ordering me a set of micro screwdrivers because I would have thought they would have had the yeah, screwdrivers with the kit. Yeah. And Keep maybe like them. just attach a magnet to the side of the screwdriver. Yep. If you don't get a magnetic one. That goes to here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um I'm second guessing myself again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where it goes. So, uh, you think this is going to come with the Batman's license plate later on? Dad, I don't know. According to this, uh, he he registered with the DMV and got a Gotham 1966 license plate. That says it reads two F three five six seven. Oh, that's what, uh, that's actually one of the bonus items when you subscribe. That uh, you'll eventually get a Batman license plate. Oh yeah. Yep. So apparently two F three five six seven is the hex code for Batman Blue. Okay, there we go. Ah. Um, there were other license plate TP6597 and Bat 1. In the home stretch. It's good to put the. Screws in now. Picture Batman walking into the DMV all decked out in his bat costume in the 1960s <laughs> getting his getting his license plate that's the wouldn't be out of character of the show that's the thing Those were, those were uh, different times for sure. screws in we get this piece done but I caught those wires been frayed have the roll bar then. We got the emergency bat turn lever, both sides, the signal lights, the siren light, these don't appear, and it's good to go. That's good to you. Don't have to worry about hurting it with the bat lever. Now on to the probably the easiest of the kits tonight. The windscreen. Apparently, the uh 
the campy, like, holy whatever Batman mm -hmm. came from the Tom Swift novels. Which I am unfamiliar with. Floss. This is number four. Take a quick look at the book on this one. It's a The Penguins of Jinx episode. First aired January 20th, 1966. Its birthday was January 20th. Batman year one. Series Batman year by year, 1942. Yeah, you can see, we just got three pieces on this one the windscreen and the two little chrome pieces that go on the sides. Hmm. You get a left and right. So, I think I can less stumbling with this one, I hope. I'll be, I'll pop those pieces on and I'll put it right back in the tray. <laughs> I guess. I want to make sure that thing stays safe. Apparently, Adam's West costume had much longer bat ears on it. And then the costume designers realized that they needed to clip the ears because they would be cut off during close-ups. Hmm. Oh, that's that one. <laughs> that's it? <laughs> that's it. Wow. That's going to be the easiest kit tonight. Those back on, and I'm going to put this back over it so it's protected. It's nice and clean. Now, put that one to the side. Now, the transmission bell housing. And I would have to just wait and wait and wait and put all this stuff in like a box and then just do it all at once when, when it all got to me. Otherwise, <laughs> I would feel like I would lose some pieces. Uh, we get to book number five, The Joker is Wild, episode five, first aired January 26th, 1966. Cesar Romero as the Joker. He would, whether he wouldn't shave his mustache, and that's awesome. They just make up over it, huh? Yep. <laughs> uh, well, really good storylines. The comics too. The Killing Joke. This was supposed to be a standalone story until they eventually worked it into the actual uh, regular timeline. Mm -hmm. at, at the end of the storyline, it was debated. Debated, did Batman kill the Joker? Which, in the original short story, he does. Mm. But when they retconned it, basically made it part of the actual main timeline, he didn't. Yet. Year 1943, Detective Comics. And here we got the parts list. We got... Bell housing, bell housing plate, uh, bell housing connector, gearbox connector, starter, connector, starter connector B, cable, and screws. We got to cut the cable ourselves. Fun, fun.
parts located in bell housing. That's not where the bell housing is. But we're going to put, put together the instructions, but not, we don't have the chassis. I think we should do something with the chassis first. Yeah. It's interesting how they, I wonder how they decide to send the pieces out. Like, I think if I were thinking through the process, I would start with the, I'd kind of build it from the bottom up, you know? Yep. So I got a hood and a wheel the first time. And now I got the roof, the windshield, and part of the transmission. Yeah. I mean, parts of it you'd have to do separately. Yeah. Because of the, you're going to have to feed the electronic stuff through. So you need the individual parts of the electronics probably first. Well, I mean, maybe, you, I don't know. I'd have to look at it. So I might send out the individual parts for the electronics that could be separated into standalone pieces. Mm -hmm. And then so that all the electronics parts were built and put together. And then after that, work from the, the bottom up. Goes right here. But I imagine with something something like this is probably complex enough that you know they had a lot of thought into how they were gonna send these pieces out. I would assume so. Uh, JBTM, sorry, at uh, 7.56, two minutes ago. Jared, how are you tonight, man? Are you excited about Friday? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, looking forward to it. And these are D on screws. That's wild. You, you're putting together a clutch cable. <laughs> yeah. Which is. It's highly detailed. These parts. Your clutch cable ends. smaller screwdriver would, would have finished out the fret row bar a little quicker. Apparently the show also inspired a woman's haircut called the back cut. Hmm. Which consisted of shaving down a woman's eyebrows and trimming her bangs to match the arch of Batman's cowl. Interesting. Oh, that's the starter. Oh, one's a starter cable. One's a clutch cable. One's a starter cable. Gotcha. Huh. 
as well. That's why I don't try to open these things. I just cut them open. Fingers not work good. That can be difficult when you're trying to grab small stuff. Must be something that I missed. Yeah. Uh, an animated movie is coming. It says, but and it says in 2015, Warner Brothers announced that West and Ward would be providing voices for a straight-to-video animated film based on the six, 1960s series <laughs> aesthetic. We need 70 millimeters and 60 millimeters for this cable. So I don't think I ever saw that. Measure twice, cut once. <laughs> Give us more cable than we need. Well, that's good. Yes. Aren't you glad you got those calipers? Yes. Darth is in the house. He says, Party on, CE. Party on, Darth. All right, you got the cables cut. Turn the calipers off. The longer of the two is now zero five H. And now zero five H. Yes. Once you cut it, it becomes a different part number. Is that how that works? It's like you're making your own your own model kit. That feeds into cable. So, who's your favorite Batman? Oh, live action? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, yeah. Hmm. I think I have to go with it. Uh, Michael Keaton, 89. Uh, Christian Bale did really good, but a different style Batman yeah I like I liked all the Christian Bale movies but I mm -hmm. to me you know growing up it was always uh, Michael Keaton was Batman yep what are we it's interesting this kit doesn't even finish up by putting the starter on I just put this cable onto the starter Darth says the live action for him was Christian Bale. And in the comics, he liked Thomas Wayne. 
I really liked the the animated series Batman. It was really oh, good. Yeah. It was like it. I mean, it captured everything that was Batman. That. Well, the starter goes here. But it doesn't tell me to install it yet. But I'm going to put them together so I don't lose them. Okay, that's that's it for the night. That's um, it. Bill. Show us what all you did. That's what I'll do, and I'll recap last week's, too. Well, last month's so over. So, sorry. Let me gather up all my extra screws. Boop, 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 boop. Can't go around without having a screw loose. Okay. First up, we did the robot tonight. Which is a little struggle with not having a teeny tiny micro screwdriver. And I need some little tiny pl pliers too. But got that together. And I wish they would have labeled this a little more clearly, but leaving left and right because there's no indication. But I think I got it right. Looks like it's all snug on there. Well, sure looks good. I mean, that's. Mm hmm. Virtual bat lever. Then we did the windscreen, which is just basically putting two pieces of chrome on it, and I put it back in the tray. Good, good call. We got the transmission bell housing, which they didn't say install the starter yet, but I did anyway, just so it's not loose somewhere. Mm -hmm. On the last month's build. Did the put the frame on the on the hood? Thanks. Yeah, it covered it. Pet hair now. <laughs> it's so shiny. You can see your face in it. <laughs> I got a Terry tail. I'm leaving it sitting on. I leave it like this on the Terry tail. Yeah, that's a good call. And we got the first rim. <laughs> Hubcap just sits on there until we get more parts. And that's a pretty hefty rim. And the bat phone. That's fun. So, yeah, that's the build for tonight. And we got a month till the next one. And they do multiple sets per month, and it looks like there's 120 of these. So we'll be doing this for a little while. Yeah. Five but, of 120 down. But it would be nice to be able to have some way to test this to make sure that's working before I do a full assembly. I might have to yeah. rig up a little a couple wires and a little battery and see if I can get this wow. thing up. Make sure you know what the LEDs are rated for. Right. I'll do like a little tiny battery. Uh, we'll watch battery or something. Yeah, like a one, one point. It's it's either going to be like 1.5 or 3 volts, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, I definitely want to make sure that uh, there's nothing wrong with that broken that connection. If there is, I can contact them it's about getting a replacement. Yeah. Something just must have like scraped across the wires and the it just like it crimped it right there and then it's yeah. on both sides of both uh, wires mm. i think with the tape it's fine but uh, i definitely want to test it yeah all righty let's check the chat very quick uh, i think we are up to date the last comment i see is thomas wayne Super shiny. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, everybody in the chat, thank you for coming out and hanging watch, watch me struggle with my big hands. And definitely knowing this one, let me know. I, I need to go grab a few tools for, before the next build. 
check out my forehand. I need some tiny micro screwdrivers, some little little pliers, tiny needle needles pliers, and I think that'll help a lot. Yeah. Maybe like a tray with a magnet or something in it to hold screws. Well, I kind of rigged up one of those with this. Oh, look at that. And I keep that handy so I don't lose them because my table's a little leans a little bit, so stuff will work. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> That's it's like. Cool. It's not the table itself, it's actually the sun porch I'm on. Oh, yeah. Because it, it was built as a deck and this was added on. So, mm -hmm. so the porches are slanted, so water runs off of them. Yeah. Well, apparently my kitchen was built slanted so that water would run off of it, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually added on to the back of the house. And so the original house is all forward from there, and then the kitchen and back mudroom were added on. So it slopes downhill <laughs> alrighty I think that's to do it for the night and, and we, everybody we appreciate you coming out and watch, watching me build the Batmobile and yeah. thank you to Fane Home again for sending this to me uh, this is really going to be a fun project the more more kits you get the more storms start to come together it's going to be even cooler but, yeah that'll be exciting yes sir that's gonna and, be a lot of anticipation and we'll catch y'all next time All right, later good night, good night.